The Great Salt Lake has seen better days, but it's seen worse too. Headlines two years ago spelled disaster for the important economic and environmental behemoth in our backyard. Mother Nature and policy progress have raised the lake several feet and allowed the conversation around conservation to continue. But a world away, the tides of another massive body of water spells a cautionary tale towards our own Great Lake. The Aral Sea is located on the border between Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan. Today, the lake is estimated to have shrunk to just a tenth of the size of its record height as the fourth largest lake in the world. This might look like it happened over thousands of years, but what's more alarming is it happened during most of our lifetimes. Take a look at this time lapse starting in 1984 and fast forwarding up to 2022. The images make it clear just how much has been lost. Today, you can still see the giant steel cranes that once functioned as a part of the Kazakh port of Aral, standing like monuments to a better time. Beached boats sit on the town's boardwalk, and camels roam the desert where once a thriving fish operation was based. This is Akshabak Bakhtamava. She grew up here with her father fishing every single morning. Then following the family business, she left to study to become a marine biologist. But when she returned, Batamava has witnessed the side effect of the Soviet Union diverting the main rivers that fed the Aral Sea. But in the early 2000s, Kazakhstan tried to save part of the lake by building a dam that essentially slices the Aral Sea in two. It allows a huge tributary to fill a much smaller part of the lake's basin. The water levels on the lake's northern side rose again. The water turned fresh and fish even returned, reviving the region's fishing operation. In Utah, scientists and resource managers are trying something similar because the Great Salt Lake has also dipped so low. If we can't get more water to the lake, sacrificing part of the lake is one of the proposals on the table. Bonnie Baxter is the director of the Great Salt Lake Institute at Westminster University. The idea is relatively simple for us because there's already a railroad causeway that divides the lake on the northwest corner where no water comes in. In 2022, the Great Salt Lake became so salty, scientists worried the entire ecosystem could collapse. So they filled a breach in the causeway, which made it much easier to manage the lake's southern section. It's kind of nice that we have this management tool that's frankly, very inexpensive. But Baxter says even with a barrier, you need a long-term strategy. The largest feeder of the Great Salt Lake is the Bear River. It runs through three states, all who communicate and work to maintain the flow of water. Kazakhstan, on the other hand, does not have a clear strategy. This year, Kazakhstan received so little water from upstream, the fish started dying again. This great success story is turning into a new disaster. Edarbek Altai Uli is a fisherman on the Aral Sea. He's made his livelihood fishing these waters. All due to many of the factors we've talked about, a lesson Utah could learn from, that despite good intentions, without continued conservation, we could lose all our good work. We actually can use the Aral Sea as an example of where we don't want to go. As for locals, this place is their life, their livelihoods, and they understandably don't want to leave their homes. So despite the odds, they feel adapting is better than giving up. Summed up best by one fisherman named Darhan Yembergenov. city. <laughs> Spencer Joseph, Fox 13 News, Utah. Fox 13 News is part of the Great Salt Lake Collaborative. It's a group of local news outlets, academic groups, and community organizations all calling attention to the Great Salt Lake and ways to save it. You can find out more by visiting greatsaltlakenews.org.